Before we get into this one, if you could just hit that subscribe button down below, that would mean a massive amount to me because we're trying to hit that big 2,000 subscribers this year. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, Leeds United have just stayed in the Premier League. Thank God for that and what a performance in that game. And a victory away at Brentford, which has kept us up. There is a video coming out soon, pending some copyright claims. Um about this whole season uh, like a montage trailer a feel-good trailer sort of thing coming out so look forward to that on the on the channel hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when i upload that um other than that there's been a few things recently i've done my first live watch along uh, so many more live watch alongs to come in the future the audio will be fixed next time and the only other thing is if you want more of me i am actually a regular now on the just joe football show so if you just search the just joe football show on youtube if you're not already aware of him um he is a leeds content creator and me jt and lufc lewis go on there and talk about all things Leeds United like a podcast. So yeah, if you want more of me, that's where I am. Let's get straight into the video though. So what's the news then? The transfer window opens in about five or six days on June the 1st and we need to be busy this summer because what's happened this season, the board, like I've said a few times, the board needs to learn from this um, and they need to start investing in this squad because quite frankly, it's not good enough at the moment for the Premier League. So... Having said that, Brendan Aronson looks like he's actually due to be flying into Leeds this week. Uh, the Square Ball have been looking around on Twitter a few a few times today where um, people have been looking at flight paths from Salzburg to, to Leeds Bradford Airport and stuff. Um, so all that's going on as usual in the transfer window. But he's due to fly into Leeds this week and have his medical, so no doubt more news on the way for him this week. He's been playing all season. I don't think he's really had any major injuries, so I can't understand why that medical wouldn't just be passed with flying colours and he'd be announced any day now um, and then obviously formalised on the 1st of June. Um, so, yeah, Brendan Aronson then. I've done two or three videos that involve Brendan Aronson. Um, the most recent one being three transfers that would flourish under Jesse Marsh. I'll link that in the cards. And that's a bit more of a look at how he would actually play under Jesse Marsh because of the style of football and how he compares to um, to people he's been put up against, uh, basically, who are already in the squad. Uh, and then there's some videos before that with some other detailed statistics on him. So if you want to check those out, those are on the channel. Um, the other big bit of news is Rafinha. Now, not great news for Leeds fans in terms of the fact that we love the player. He's just got that penalty um, and the celebrations. You could see how much it meant to him, the absolute passion on his face. But it looks like Barcelona are due to be formalising a bid in the next few days. Now, I've seen a few different reported figures, so I don't think we can put too much stock in them. We'll have to see what the official figure is. But I can't imagine that Leeds are going to accept Barcelona's first bid. Barcelona will bid quite low for him and then Leeds will say no that's not nowhere near enough then they'll offer a bit more. The other thing that we need to take into account with this is that apparently Victor Orta is quite keen on Serginio Dest, um, the American right back who is currently at Barcelona. Um, the one thing I want to say on this is look what happened with Junior Firpo last time we signed a full back from Barcelona. Is it going to work out with that situation? I don't know. I'd be more tempted to take the full amount of money from Barcelona and try and invest that elsewhere. Now, in my opinion, I think we're looking at between 60 and 70 million euros. Uh, sorry, not euros, pounds that is. So that would be more in euros for Rafinha. I think that's a fair price, a reasonable price considering his goal contributions in a team that has actually struggled this season. Um, I think he's been amazing and it's not even just his actual statistics you look at, it's the way he plays football, I mean it's unbelievable the way he takes people on, he nutmegs people, he takes it around people, he's proper, proper different gravy and I think he's definitely worth in the region of 60 to 70 million pounds. Now Barcelona have actually gone through quite a lot of financial difficulty in recent times and therefore if they can't cough up the full amount of money straight on they may have to try and offer a player like Serginio Dest as extra bit of compensation for the transfer going through and then perhaps Victor Orta, uh, Kinnear and Randrizani would be more willing to to listen to that then uh, because obviously they are trying to recruit players as well so 
it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of days with Rafinha. Like I say, it won't just be a bid that goes straight in and we accept it straight away. There'll be a bit of back and forth. Um, and I will update you when a formal bid is arranged um, and, and I'll make a little opinion on that as well on, on the channel, so look out for that. The final thing is that we've also apparently been linked with an unnamed Premier League striker. Now, Phil Hay broke this on The Athletic and apparently Leeds are talking to an unnamed Premier League striker. Now, me, Joe and JT speculated about who that might be uh, the other night on the Just Joe Football Show, so if you want to check that out, check that out and um, we were basically saying that given that we want to get quite a few players in this season I was saying that perhaps it's one of the players who's about to run out of contract because you get a bit of a bargain granted they might have higher wages but you get a bit of a bargain that way so one of the ones that we were leaning more heavily towards was Eddie Nketiah now obviously Eddie Nketiah was at Leeds in the championship and did fairly well when he came in but he was actually a bit younger then he's now matured a little bit scored a lot more goals for Arsenal particularly towards the end of this season he scored a good few goals and two of them actually come in against us um, at the Emirates so Eddie Nketiah would he be a good addition to our team well I don't think he would want to be playing second fiddle to Bamford because that's what happened in the championship. He didn't see much game time and he was already second fiddle to Lacazette at Arsenal who Lacazette's contract is also up as well but I think he'll want to go and play Champions League somewhere, at least European football. Um, so Eddie Nketiah then. If we play with two up top, that sort of blocks Gelhart's route to the first team but we are now going to see five substitutes I think in the Premier League next season per game so that could be a little bit more of a chance for youngsters to get game time um, but how often will we actually play two up top I don't know I'm not sure whether it's better to go for a striker who is more happy to sit on the bench as a backup to Bamford and then when Bamford's injured gets first team uh, game time but hopefully in the coming days and weeks we find out who this unnamed striker is I mean the other options that we talked about on the on the Just Joe show were some of the ones from the relegated teams like um, Emmanuel Dennis who had a really really good start to the season but then dropped off a little bit towards the end well actually dropped off a cliff and stopped scoring goals altogether uh, Timu Puki can't see it to be honest um, I don't I just don't think he would fit our team and our system and I don't think he's all that great uh, Valt Veghorst I, do, I don't from what I'd seen and heard when he was in the Bundesliga he looked like a really good player and I couldn't understand why Burnley were able to get him for £13 million but now I've seen him a few times in the Premier League he does seem like a little bit of a donkey as harsh as that may sound <laughs> because of the, some of the absolute sitters that he's missed I mean the one against Newcastle at the weekend was unbelievable just past the post and then the one that Tyrone Mings blocked off the line you, you just think Jesus if we'd have finished then we'd have probably been down but so thank God for Val Veghorst but I don't want him at Leeds <laughs> And then some of the other options that people were speculating about are Amanda Obroja, who was at Southampton, who had a really, really good start to the season, but also seemed to fall off a cliff a little bit towards the end of the season. But he's big, physical, and he's young as well, so he's got all that ceiling to, to try and get to. So for me, Eddie Nketiah would definitely be a good addition, but it's whether he would want to want to come to Leeds in the situation that he we are in, unless he can be convinced of the project by... Marsh, by Orta, by Radrazani, etc. So it'd be interesting to see how that one unfolds. I'm sure Phil Hay will be first to report on it and then obviously I'll make some opinion videos on all the transfers that are coming in the coming weeks and it is exciting times for Leeds because we do need additions and I think some people need to get out of the door as well. We have a lot of low knees. Um, I mean, we only just got rid of Lawrence de Bock and... I don't know even know how he was still on our books. Well, I do. He's running down his contract. But some players we've got on our books now is never really going to even play for Leeds. And I don't see a pathway to the first team there. So we kind of need to get rid of a little bit of the dead wood. Um, and then perhaps some of our first player, first team players who have been regulars since the championship days, they need to make a little bit more of a, a bench role I think uh, with some new signings coming in to supplement the team so I mean I've said this before but I think we need a backup striker 
uh, an attacking midfielder who looks like it's going to be Brendan Aronson any day now and a backup holder midfielder. If you were to ask me after that, I think the next priority is a right back or left back, another full back to fill in on either side. Um, to be honest, it is probably the next priority after those ones. Um, so that's my thoughts on the, the current transfer rumours that are floating around, what I think we need to bring in and uh, the sort of prices that we're expecting to see on a bid from Rafinha. I mean, I saw one uh, I saw one tweet that stated that they'd offered 35 million plus 5 million euros in add-ons or something. And I can't believe that. I mean, um, I think Adam Pope replied, which leg? And yeah, perfect comment because that's just ridiculous to offer. I mean, 50 million was rejected in January from West Ham. So 35 million euros, it's just not, it's not going to be accepted, is it? So, um, I expect that bid to go up and up. But like I say, if Barcelona don't have the funds to pull it off, we could see a swap deal going along with some extra money as well. So that's going to be it for this one. Just wanted to update you on the transfers and stuff. Haven't done an actual sit down video like this in a while. So it's nice to get talking to the camera again, get talking to you guys um, about everything Leeds United. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time on Leeds Lately.